Good afternoon, this is Trey with Avmore again, and I wanted to do a uh, more of a blog video. Um, this is Charlie Bond. He's the environmental uh, party of the website, so he's responsible for all the trails, <laughs> managing that they're not getting eroded, no. uh, all the plant and vegetation. Yep. And what other responsibilities do you uh, are you are you part of? Um, yeah. Basically, it's uh, anything uplands, wetlands, so anything that's associated with the natural resources. Um, in addition, also a little bit of the cultural resources that are up here. Um, and then we try to integrate that actually with the, uh, we'll call it the lifestyle right. aspect. So we try to integrate all those together. It's a, a live, work, play thing. I know they talk about, but mine is more educate where you live. Um, the people that we have here is, in addition to being responsible for doing the monitoring and the, the revegetation and the firescaping and all that stuff up here, um, it's also my responsibility to educate the the other residents on what are the natural functions of the ecosystems up here, what are the wildlife, what are the plant species, uh, how do they all work together. So we're living with the ecosystem yeah. as opposed to... So just as a quick note, yeah. if you're interested in learning more about some of Charlie's work, there's downloads on the website that you can pull. There's wildlife, yep. uh, all sorts of vegetation stuff, birds. And so let's talk real quickly about some of the opportunities that you work with Avamore to bring to the subdivision. You do uh, bike rides? Yep, we do. We try to do uh, weekly bike rides uh, during the summer. Well, actually, spring, summer, and fall. Um, all varying levels of, of activity and, and uh, skill set. Uh, we do walks. We do uh, basically wildflower walks in the spring when everything starts um, budding out. We do big game walks during the winter. Uh, we actually tracking. One of the things we do is actually track the wildlife up here, uh, do tracking studies and census. Okay. And we, again, we try to integrate the, the residents as well as the public while we go up and do that. Um, we do bird, bird walking. We do bird walks and stuff. Again, bird census. We have uh, one of the best, um, one of the residents here actually put together a bird blog. It's actually, I think, uh, the National Audubon's number five in the United States. Um, this is actually one of the best birding areas in the state of Idaho. Um, and actually one of the best in the North. Question, even though Avamore is its own thing, this is open to the public. So yes. anyone, anyone can come up here and take access and enjoy some of this. What are, are there any guidelines? Uh, yeah, we actually, in development of uh, the wildlife plan and stuff like that, one of the big components is uh, the recreation plan. Uh, so one of those, it's not year-round use. We actually have seasonal restrictions on certain areas that are associated with key wildlife habitat. Okay. Um, so during the winter, we actually have set dates of when certain areas are closed off to the public. Not only the public, but uh, the residents as well. Um, but we keep a large area open so we can continue doing... Uh, snowshoeing, we can do cross-country skiing, all those. The idea is to, to manage with wildlife in mind, but still let everybody use the amount. If, uh, if I was not familiar with Avamore and Boise Foothills and this end of it, first of all, I can go from here to downtown Boise, right? Yes. On a, on a trail. So uh, how far is it from here to downtown Boise? Uh, here to downtown Boise, if we're talking some of the trails trail. up here, trail-wise, trail we have probably about 20-some-odd miles. So not, not too bad. No. Um, but we can actually go if you wanted to, if people are familiar with the, the Highland Hollow Loop or the, the uh, uh, Siemens Gulch Loop. Right. Uh, we actually, the trail right behind us goes Broken Horn right over that. It's two and a half miles uh, from the end of it. So from, the, from our house, it's four and a half miles to uh, Siemens Gulch Road. Cool. And that's, uh, that's actually one of the trails we have open to the public. And so someone theoretically could drive from here, hit Siemens Gulch and be downtown and 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, if, if, uh, if you were to make some recommendations to people who wanted to get out and explore the foothills here, what, uh, what, what are the big landmarks around here in terms of uh, exploring and trails? Because and, there's a trail map download you can also do from the website. Yep. Uh, what are good. some of the easier, better, more notable trails? Uh, the, the, probably one of the most is uh, Spring Valley Creek Trail. Okay. Um, it's a single track. Um, basically in the middle of the overall community. It's kind of the north of the existing residents right now. Um, it's a single track. Uh, it's restricted uh, to bikes and uh, basically pedestrian and bikes only. Uh, we had to restrict it from horses because, you know, a safety issue. But it's uh, by far the most beautiful trail up here. Uh, beginning to end is three and a half miles. Um, all of our trails loop. So there's actually what we call the Spring Valley Loop. Uh, Spring Valley up and over comes down 
either burnt car or actually there's another really really cool that comes down to it. it's about seven and a half miles okay um, it would be moderate to heavy in some areas but a, a moderate skilled person could ride that on a mountain bike very easy cool. and then we integrate that in with uh, we do three races with uh, the knobby tire folks uh, they integrate all of our trails in so there. the the next race is June 6th, I believe? No, it's actually May 12th is the May 12th. first one. May 12th. Okay, then, so just coming up. Yep. Uh, the first one, that'll be their opener. They do their season opener up here. And so we have not only the racers, but we do a little festival down in the park. Um, again, the same time as we also have a, a FireWise Day, that same where we do education for not only residents, but the public on our FireWise community. Uh, Avmore is one of the most FireWise communities. Uh, it's probably the most FireWise community in the Boise Foothills. Um, we've integrated the fact is most firewise communities that are out there right now were built first and then they integrated the firewise concept afterward afterwards the nice thing with Avmore is we integrate not only the firewise concepts with landscaping but they actually integrate that into the structure and the landscaping of each resident itself uh, they actually all residents have to go through a firewise board uh, before their plans are finalized, including landscaping and uh, structural. Obviously, we're living in the desert, so water is a huge issue. So tell me some of the things the foothills here and Avonmore specifically are doing to manage that natural resource. Again, biggest thing is uh, one of the biggest uses of water in the valley is lawns, landscaping, and then just general use. Uh, with Avonmore, all the landscaping, um, there is a set uh, amount of lawn space actually grass space that you can have uh, for water use. Uh, there's really stress for native species, drought tolerant species, uh, to significantly reduce the overall water use. Um, in addition to that, there's also the uh, MBR plant. Basically, there's a water treatment plant on site, um, which significantly increases our water conservation up here. Right. Um, normally, you know, if you go down, you know, basically in the valley, call it, uh, you have greater greater use irrigated lawns they can use 24 7 um, you don't need to do that here uh, very little water use but nobody water, wants it here because everyone's yeah. too busy having fun out there exactly so nobody's going to use it inside but yeah. the water that is used uh, they basically the water treatment uh, uses that it's treated effluent and then it's reused on the lawns on the parks and stuff like that so the odor the overall conservation water conservation is 50 to 85 percent more than the valley depending on very where cool. you're looking at so if someone wanted to get involved with uh this whole fiesta of activities. Uh, there's a website they can go to, which is uh, AvmoreStewardship.com. Dot com. Um, and we do a lot of work with you know the public in general. But one of the biggest things we do is uh, working with groups like the Southwest Mountain Biking so uh, Swimba, right? Uh, the Navi Tire folks. But one of the biggest ones we've been doing is uh, the Eagle Scouts. Um, last year in particular, we had seven different Eagle Scouts do their projects up here. And they built a bridge within the last two months? Yep, that was actually one Eagle Scout that was his, his over project. Last year, the Eagle Scouts out there did about six and a half miles of trails. Uh, we also had one Eagle Scout uh, put uh, informational kiosks in our conservation easement. So is there a calendar that people can check out and, 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 and do they have to... Uh join or, or email you or RSVP or can they just show up? Or? Uh, no, you actually just, uh, the avmorestewardship.com, we actually have a calendar on there with all the events um, that you can go on there. You don't have to sign up or anything. Okay. It's an open. Uh, they also have our direct, uh, not only the sales office and that communication, but has a direct line to myself and my staff. Cool. Uh, so any questions on the recreation component, the wildlife component, uh, wetlands, water conservation, all of that stuff is on the site and they can contact us directly too. We appreciate your time today, and uh, thank you again, and congratulations on all your success in making this happen. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.